Hey everybody, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Dr. Lee and as you can see, it is another beautiful day in South Texas. Thank you so much for taking a little time out of your busy day to drop by. Today's video is going to be a little bit lengthy, I fear, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Over the last several videos that I've made down in the comments section, you guys have requested more trail cam pictures. More wild animals, please. So. Um, I got to checking back through the last few videos and you're right I haven't put a whole lot of them up there. So Today I will rectify that situation. So hang on to your seat Lots of animal videos coming up in this one the harsh environmental conditions that we've endured over the past several months Have created a lot of changes and those are reflected in what we see on the game cameras and I'll explain that as we go here number one change this past summer tied for the hottest summer on record. Also, this year easily won first place in the driest year ever. Those two things right there are a terrible combination. But when you add number three, the fact that my neighbor next door has destroyed hundreds of acres of animal habitat in order to make a subdivision over there has created a lot of changes on my land as well. So we'll get into that very soon. Going species by species, we'll start with the deer. The axis deer, thank goodness, are back. For those of you who don't know, axis deer are non-native deer. They're basically from the areas of Nepal, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. They're basically Indian deer. They were brought to Hawaii in 1860. They're now quite plentiful there. They were brought, they were brought to Texas in 1932 and they are now ubiquitous here in central South Texas. This climate here, the foods that we have for them and all, seem to just really, really match what they had back in their native land. So they've done really, really well here. The only problem is sometimes we get some really, really cold snaps like we did on Valentine's Day about a year and a half ago. It got down under freezing for an entire week. The lows got down to five degrees and our little herd of about 25 to 30 axis deer went down to three. But as you can see in these videos, the axis are back and we are happy. All that crashing you hear is my neighbor raping his land over there and the animals are paying the price for it. And along with the axis deer, the white-tailed deer also suffered this summer. It was so hot, you can see this little deer right here, this little doe, breathing with her mouth open. Anytime you see a deer with open mouth breathing, that animal is in trouble. And if you look down at the bottom of these videos, you'll see the thermometer reading on the bottom of the videos. And these little guys really, really suffered through last summer. As the heat increased and the vegetation decreased, all the grasses and all the foliage died. You can tell by the color of the grasses here. Usually in these times of year, there's lush green grass. And as you can see, everything is dead. So I've been supplementing corn through these feeders. This particular feeder will hold about five to 600 pounds. It's solar powered, it's got a battery in it. And it cycles about three times a day, eight o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the afternoon. And then it also cycles at midnight for those nocturnal animals. And the noise of the feeder, Well, let me tell you, for a lot of them out there, that is the come and get it dinner bell, as witnessed by these whitetails headed for dinner. And to increase the protein in these little guys, because I know they're not getting anything out of the grass, I've been supplementing with cattle range cubes just to get that protein up. The guy down at the feed store told me, he said, well, those deer won't be able to eat that. Their mouths aren't big enough. Well. We've proved him wrong. They figured out a way. Even this little raccoon down here with this deer, he figured out a way to eat them too. So I'm glad some of the little animals are getting benefits from it as well. And also to increase the minerals in these little guys, I've been putting out these big lick blocks. These are mineral blocks and all the animals can benefit from them as well. The drought has caused all kinds of hazards. Some you would never think about. All the small little ponds have all dried up and there's only one source of water for these animals right now. And it's down where the big dam is, where the lake used to be. And it now is about six feet down. It's all shrunk down to a small pool. 
that is surrounded by the worst mud you can imagine. You can see this little doe right here got up to over her knees in the mud trying to go get a drink of water. And to be honest with you, she is very, very lucky to have gotten out of it. That stuff's just like quicksand. You saw a couple of videos back, me trying to walk on that stuff. It's, it's pretty scary. Anyway, bless her heart, she's a lucky girl, let me tell you that. And another terrible thing that most people don't realize associated with the drought is a lot of the grasses that are normally soft and pliable and easy for these animals to chew. Because of the lack of water, they become stiff and brittle. They abrade the inside of the animal's mouth, the mucosa along the jawbone and also along the inside of the cheek. And bacteria that are normally in the mouth called actinomyces, they get embedded into those tissues and they create a condition called lumpy jaw. And you see this little deer right here, and here's a few other pictures I took off the internet as well. But nevertheless, what's gonna happen here, deer don't chew like that like most animals do. They grind their food like that. And if they can't grind their food, they can't swallow it. And so you know where this is going. He's not gonna be able to grind his food. He's not gonna be able to swallow it. You see the date on these videos and uh, we've not seen this little guy since. So I'm sure he's probably already succumbed to this disease. And the lack of water has also greatly decreased the number of rodents that we see around here. The mice, the rats, the possums, the nutria, um, rabbits, you know, all those small animals like that. We are not seeing very many of them at all. And the fact that over there on my neighbor's land, and you can probably hear the equipment crashing over there through this whole video. But with them clearing all that land over there, the coyotes all moved over here the small animals that they had over there can't travel this far so they stayed there probably have mostly died by now so now not only do we not have enough small animals to support the coyote population here we have twice as many coyotes and when the coyotes run out of small animals to eat they start attacking larger animals as well and if you'll look at this poor little girl right here she barely survived a coyote attack. You can tell one got a hold of the back end of her and one got a hold of the front end of her. Um, and, as, and again, she's open mouth breathing, which means she is in trouble. She's got wounds on her face, on her neck, on her shoulders, on the sides of her rib cage, on her rump, and they tore her tail completely off. And once again, just like the lumpy jaw deer, We've not seen this one again either. That's the only picture I have of this deer. And I've got 13 cameras out. If she was out here, we would have seen her by now. So I'm sure, especially with the open mouth breathing, she probably died soon after this video was made. And also I'd like to, for you to watch this video of this coyote coming up. And if you didn't watch very closely, you missed the reason he's running. So I'm going to put the first two seconds of this clip on a loop and you can see what he was running after. Just another little fawn trying to evade the coyote's pursuit. And with the coyote numbers out of control, here's your little sample of what goes on out here on the ranch every night.
And as much as I hate these coyotes killing these baby deer and attacking the big adult deer, honestly, I kind of feel sorry for them too because they are just victims of urban sprawl. If my neighbor wasn't over there destroying all that land over there for a subdivision, they would be doing just fine over there with their own set of small animals to eat and all that, and they would not be over here. Frustrating, very frustrating. And as usual, Mother Nature repeats herself and our favorite old uninvited guests are back. Whoa, 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 did you see that? All right, let's slow it down and review. There, in the yellow. Do you guys remember the black and white spotted hog that I had to shoot and kill because of a situation I stupidly created and it frustrated me because I really liked that hog. And after I killed him, I thought, well, China's gone. And you guys all said, you've got three pregnant sows out there You've only captured two of them. More than likely you will have some little baby spotted China Juniors before you know it. Well, folks, you were right. That day is here. So here's the rest of the pig montage starring China Junior. And the population of Rio Grande wild turkeys is also declining quite rapidly. They're not smart, they're not fast, they can't fly very far, and the idiots lay their eggs on the ground. So uh, when you double your coyote population and you've got raccoons all over the place, you're not gonna have turkeys very much longer. So a little bit of rain and some cooler temperatures and some good food and some nice habitat would really change things around here. And only surpassed by the elusive ringtail cat, the foxes, the gray foxes, are my favorite species to watch out here. This one in particular. This little dude, or, or dudette, is a little female gray fox. Uh, she caught my eye a couple of years ago basically because she's easy to spot because she has a nerve damaged left front leg. She carries it around, she can't straighten it out, more than likely a radial nerve damaged leg. But that leg dangles all the time and she is unable to use it. Yet I see her all over the ranch and she's taken up residence. She lives under a small house that we have beside the big house. So we see her out through the day, sunning herself behind that little house. But like I said, she gets up and travels this whole ranch. I've seen her on every one of the 13 game cameras we have out here. And talking about foxes, this next video is really, really rare. We usually see them as singles, occasionally, weirdly, and this is usually when they've got babies and they're both out hunting for them, we'll see two. But recently, I got this video right here. This is either four or five foxes, I can't really tell. I think it's probably four, which is rare. I've never seen four of them together with sirens going. It's back over on the part of the ranch that's closest to the highway. And you can hear sirens in the background and they're all just making this little exodus. I have no clue what that's all about. Never seen it before, probably will never see it again.
I don't know what's so cool about this particular log laying on the ground, but I get two or three videos every night of some animal doing the little tight wire act across it. I've been working on this video for about four days and though I enjoy doing it, it has been a lot of work. I pull the SD cards out of these 13 cameras once a week and some of the SD cards will have up to six, seven hundred videos on them and like I said, I've had about eight weeks worth downloaded on my computer so I've been going through literally thousands of 10 to 20 second videos to get enough to make this video today. and. Um, and I couldn't throw them all away. So here's some of our honorable mentions. Starting off here is a little white-tailed deer and an armadillo, totally ignoring each other. A porcupine going home. Frankie, my favorite barn cat. A very cautious possum. Somebody's black cat doing big cat things. A deer and a fox, also totally ignoring each other. Some crazy farmer looking for his barn cat. A rare red-shouldered hog sitting on a feeder. A regular old armadillo doing dumb stuff. A very pregnant possum. A daytime porcupine going home. Little fat Frankie stalking something in his imagination. A porcupine following Frankie. A trespassing tabby cat. A trespassing black cat being stalked by a possum who's being stalked by a porcupine. An armadillo doing more dumb stuff. A Russian blue being stalked by Frankie. A farmer looking for Frankie. A generic house cat impersonating a bobcat. Double trouble going home. Our cautious possum going home. And Frankie going home. Well, folks, that's about it from out here on the ranch. Um, the rut, the breeding season for the white-tailed deer, has begun. You'll see the bucks with their heads down, nose to the ground, chasing the does all day long, rarely stopping to eat. And due to the horrible environmental conditions, they, they don't have much body fat to keep them going through the rut. So next year's fawn crop is definitely in jeopardy. So I'll keep shooting corn and minerals and protein to these little skinny guys in hopes that it'll help them survive until Mother Nature complies with a kinder year. Oh, and I forgot, I have a little present for those of you who endured this video this long. Yep, here he is, our little ringtail cat, supporting the old adage that good things come to those who wait. Folks, that's it from out here on the ranch today. Thank you for enduring this video. I know it was long. I hope you got your trail cam fix, your wild animal fix. I hope 
I hope you're all good for a while now. Anyway, I enjoyed bringing it to you. It was a lot of work, but I thank you for uh, making those suggestions because I really enjoyed making the video for you. God bless you all. Thanks again for being here. I really look forward to seeing you again on the next video. And I want you to always remember I love you. Bye-bye now. So what you doing there, huh? Neutering dog, Dad. All right. Who's gonna learn you? That's a mistake. <laughs>